Hi guys. So, once you have your split piece of wood all marked out and documented and uh, kind of formatted in your notebook in an appropriate way, we're going to go over to Rhino and start to build the missing half. So here I have a brand new Rhino file and first off I'm just going to check the units by typing in units. Make sure it's in inches because that's what I measured in. And the first things first, we're going to set up some guides. So over here, I'm going to just go to my top view, and I'm going to make sure my O snaps are on so we can snap to the lines that we're going to create. And first, I'm going to draw how thick the piece of wood was, which for everyone, it should be 1.5 inches. And since we probably measured from the top down to the splice in the wood, we're going to be drawing those lines from the top down. So from that line, I'm going to draw the beginning in the end, kind of set up a guide. And dependent on how many measurements you took along this axis on your little jig, you're going to put that many lines down. For me, I didn't do as accurate as you guys will, so I only did one. So that's going to be our first step. Our second step is going to be where we took the sections. So for that step, I'm just going to do 8 inches wide, because that's how wide our sections of wood were. And I'm just going to draw some lines from the beginning to the end again. Just to, see, to show you guys how I documented mine, I'm going to put in a picture frame with my notes in there. And so basically, we're going to recreate five different little measurement sections I did on my piece of wood and create some curves based off these little measuring tools. So let's first just take care of the side view and where we took the sections. So here, I know that dimension. So from here to here, I had my measurement little distance there at one inch and a quarter. So I'm just going to slide a piece over there next one was two and an eighth. Slide that over. Next one was three inches. Slide that over again. And the last one obviously is at the end. So with that, I'm going to just take that, drag it down, get that out of the way. So the next one is where we're going to get our curvature so we can make a piece that fits in there. So my first section that correlates with here, first dimension was three and a quarter. So 3.25. And you guys, this is going to be completely different than mine, and mine is not as accurate as yours is going to be. So my middle dimension was 2.5, and my end dimension was 1.75. I'm just going to draw a line there, keep things organized. And I'll just move that just somewhere down there. It doesn't matter right now. So my second dimension is 2 and 3 eighths. So I'm just going to put a 2 and add on 3 eighths to that. When you guys do fractions, if you do fractions, and you don't know the decimal for it, you can always just type in the 2 and then do 3 uh, slash 8. And then it'll add up. The next one is just 2. Five eighths, so one. Next one would be five eighths. That's that. Now let's put another line there. Be sure to keep these in order, otherwise your fabricated piece won't line up. Next one is two and an eighth. And one and a quarter. Depending on how detailed you measured, you're going to have probably quite a bit more than what I have here. So I'll try to rush through this. Be 
our fourth one, and then we have one more to go. Alright, here we go. So these are going to be our sections. So, next what I'm going to do is come over to the interpolated line. I'm going to click on this little arrow and make sure we get interpolated points. This will keep wherever we select on route with our measurements instead of going off using the Bezier curve. So all you're going to want to do is just trace out the endpoints of all of these. If you hit right click, it'll repeat commands. There we are. All right. Next, let's just get these kind of lined up using our move command and holding shift to keep them moving in the, in the straight direction. might get a little bit cramped. Okay, next, let's just try to keep a running history because you guys might want to use these little curves for your drawings that you're going to be presenting. Let's go to our perspective view. So if we select our objects, hit ZS as a hotkey, it'll zoom in on them. And what I'm going to do with these is using the gumball I'm just going to select this. Now, we're just going to line up all of our sections here. One thing we can do is rotate them up and over so they align. So, using the move command, actually let's lock this first. We can lock using control L and you can unlock, type again unlock. Let's just move these guys to where I took the measurements. And luckily I kept them in order so I know where they go on my little measuring curves. So hitting unlock, let's just copy and paste them over. It's kind of a good general rule of thumb to kind of keep copy and pasting over and then you have a history of how you're creating stuff. So next let's just delete our lines through here but keeping the top and bottom lines that we created. There we are. Let's just copy and paste them over again, just like so. Now let's select our bottom lines. Next we're going to type in loft and we're going to go to normal up in the loft options, hit preview and hit OK. Now I have it in wireframe so I'm going to go over to shaded so we can take a look. Next we're going to do loft once again, just get a straight section. Hit enter, doesn't matter. And next, let's fill in the sides. Just by selecting our edges, we're able to complete the box. Now next, let's just select these guys so we don't have any excess curves. So all six sides of this, select. Let's just move them over and we can delete out these curves since we already have it kept there and let's join it. So from our measurings out of our sketchbook, what we have here is an accurate model of the other side of your split piece of wood. Now to fabricate this, we're going to be using the contour command. So let's copy and paste this over again and making sure it's joined, hitting control J, and let's type in contour. Now it says our base point here and then perpendicular. So if we wanted to make a bunch of contours 
rolling along this side, we'd put the contour that way. Next, we're going to type in the distance. So let's just say we're making our digitally fabricated model out of quarter inch acrylic. Let's type in 0.25, and that'll be inches. It's going to slice up this digital model into quarter inch little pieces. Next, we can move this over. Now, let's do it the other way. So type in contour again, and let's go the opposite way. And again, type in 0.25, and it's going to slice it that way. Next, let's just delete out our poly surface and look at those lines. This will give us a detailed uh, profiles for matching up to our physical piece of wood. So next, let's just copy and paste these over, just in case you want to use them for your in-class drawing. And basically, what we can do is just to try to get a little preview, type in extrude curve, let's make sure they're solid, and just type in 0.25 inches. Now let's do the same, making sure that they're joined. Type in extrude curve, make sure the direction's right, hitting control or D, enter, and just type in 0.25 again. There's a nice little preview. So depending on how accurate you guys were in measuring, this should fit just about perfectly up to your piece of wood. So, if you want to lay this out for the laser cutter, the next step, and we'll just do it for this portion, we'll just copy and paste this over. Basically what I'm going to do next, the laser cutter cuts 18 inches by 32 inches. So this is going to be our material that we're going to use to fabricate this. Next I'm just going to lock it. And I'm going to rotate this up, and we're going to lay out all these little cut pieces. This might be a little tedious and take a little bit of time, but it is worth it because you'll save some time in the laser cutter. Okay. Basically what I'm doing is just moving all of these over, and trying to keep them semi-close together. Basically what it's going to do is lay out all our cut sheets for fabricating the other half of this split piece of wood. Also once we get it onto the cut sheet, it could make a very interesting drawing for your assignment. Another way you could do this is instead of, say you didn't want to use the laser cutter, you could print these out and use it as a template for cutting it out of foam or on the bandsaw. Basically you just print it out and then you put it on your piece of wood or foam and you'll tape it or mount it to the material and just trace around it as best as you can. Not as accurate as the laser cutter, but it'll work. And for now, if we got these in a straight line, that's fine. We're going to move them later so it fits our piece of material anyway. So the big thing here is make sure you don't have them overlapping. And if we look in our top view, these are all the pieces that we're going to cut. Now obviously if you did the cut this way, you'll have much less, but it might be less accurate than you would like. So next, since this is our material for the laser cutter, 18 by 32, obviously this is falls off the bed. So what we're going to do next, is just bring this down to the next row. The big issue here is just keeping everything organized so you know that this piece goes underneath this piece, and this piece together, once they're glued, goes underneath these, this piece. 
So whether you need to put them in order as they go or put tags on them for laser cutting, that is up to you. So basically this could work as a drawing as well or any one of these after you make 2D potentially if you rotate this up. As long as you're keeping an accurate history of what you're creating, you're able to just make drawings just as quick as you are digitally modeling your fabrication techniques. But make sure to just keep copy and pasting how you did it and you're able to really create these things quickly 